Okay, guys, this is a, a whole lamb, and this is pretty Poor much lamb. how it comes in. Okay. Yeah, this life is okay, this is how it comes in right after it's been slaughtered. A couple things we're going to notice right off the bat. First of all, I noticed that indeed this has been a graded animal, hasn't it? Yes. And got the roll. We have our right What here. I see is a roll that starts at the shoulder and it's rolled all the way down to the leg. So therefore, if I am the chef and I have this come in my door, I, I can indeed see that this has been graded and this is a lamb USDA choice. All the way down. Something else that we haven't seen on any of our other animals yet, but we see it here, is a yield grade. Now, yield grading is done on animals, and in this instance, this has a yield grade of two. More often than not, we're going to see about a yield grade of uh, two to three for USDA choice lamb. In this instance, it's two. A yield grade of one indicates that it's sort of leaner, and a yield grade of five indicates that it's fattier. Yield grading. This is a this yield is a grade of two. 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 two and three is two. I'll be on razor with everyone. Yeah, what's the price one. per pound on the back? On the back? I'm one of the only five. Five. Yeah. Five. He asked, what's the price per pound? He said, I don't know. Oh, he said he don't know. I don't know. I look like he's talking to two or three people. I don't know. Okay, oh, I'm going to take and open up the animal, and what I'm going to see inside of here, first of all, I see this little piece of muscle. If this were a beef animal, this would be called the skirt steak. This piece of muscle right here, which is on both sides, on the bottom of the ribs, this is the diaphragm muscle, the diaphragm. It helps the animal to breathe. So therefore, what we do here is we can take and cut this off. It's a small piece of meat. Now, on beef animals, we use this for carne asada. I, sometimes they take it and they sell it, they roll it up into like little roulades and sell it and package it like that in the market. What I also see down on the end here, if I open it up, are the two tenderloins, or the true filet mignons. The true filet mignons, right. the tenderloins of the lamb, which are located under the loin section or the rear saddle of the lamb. Right here, this piece of flesh and this piece of flesh, which is also located under the loin, if this were a beef animal, this would be our flank. Our flank, right here. Sometimes what we might be able to do is cut this little piece of, of muscle off, cut some of the skirt off, and we can do maybe a nice little grilled item with it. Acid-based marinade and grill it quickly. Acid-based marinade and grill it quickly. What I want to do first, when I get my lamb is I'm going to actually come in here and take out the filet mignons, okay? And what I'm going to do, this is our tenderloin or our filet mignons. I'm just going to get my knife in here and I'm going to follow from the front of the loin right near the 13th rib all the way to the H bone or the hip bone back here and remove the filets from both sides. And if you recall, we've already looked at our beef fillet, correct? Mm -hmm. We've looked at our pork fillet yesterday, and we did a demo with this. And now we're going to look at our lamb fillet. And I just wanted to show you how small the lamb fillet is compared to our, our pork, which is a little bigger, and of course the beef fillet, which is much larger. Wonderful piece of meat, very tender, very expensive. Well, you know, we could do some nice little appetizers or nice little entrees, but it's going to be a lot of money. Okay, let's take off the other filet. And remember, when we are taking this off, we want to make sure that our knife is angled right towards the bone and not towards the flesh so we get it all off. Always the tip of the knife.
So our second fillet. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly start to break this down into. We could either do it into a fore and rear saddle, and uh, which we can do by finding and locating our thirteenth rib, which is the last rib of the animal, and we're going to make an incision between the thirteenth and twelfth rib, and then cut through with our handsaw, okay? So we're gonna locate the 13th rib. And we're gonna make an incision between our 13th and 12th rib on one side, and do the same on the other side. And then using our handsaw, we're going to take and break apart the fore saddle and the rear saddle. The fore saddle now, this is the rear saddle of the animal, this is the fore saddle of the animal. So we have the fore quarters, 